Like the weird thing is, like my favorite animal is a cow, but they're also my favorite animal to eat. <laughs> okay, so you see, it, you so see like, how that would be. Yeah, that but like they're adorable, but they're also delicious. <laughs> okay, so we are here today, downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street. We've got a table here set up. You can't love animals and eat them too. Debate a vegan. We have Remy. Remy, it's nice to meet nice you, Remy. To meet you. Based on the sign that we have here on the table, you can't love animals and eat them too. How does that make you feel? Oh, it's hard. <laughs> I'm like, because I love animals and I eat them too, but my best friends love animals and don't eat them. <laughs> okay, so you have friends that are vegan. Yeah, my, be no, my two best friends are vegan. Okay, mm. and so in terms of loving animals, define what you mean by that. Oh, uh, it's hard because like I love animals, but then at the same time, I'm just like, there's pet animals and there's eating animals. Right, okay, <laughs> so you, you, you see the distinction. So would you say you're an animal lover then or a pet lover? Oh, I guess pet lover then, but I still love, like the weird thing is like my favorite animal is a cow, but they're also my favorite animal to eat. <laughs> okay, so you see it, you so see like, how that would be. Yeah, but like they're adorable, but they're also delicious. <laughs> okay, so what makes you feel the need to eat them? And do you really think that's true love if you're paying for your favorite animal to suffer and die? I know, that does sound really sad. <laughs> that so, sounds sad. <laughs> It, yeah, so it, no, yeah. it is really sad, and it's a lot of things that I personally never once thought about mm -hmm. myself either. So, have you ever really had the opportunity to sit and connect with cows? Well, first of all, let me ask you this first: Do you have pets at home, like dogs or cats? Yeah, I have dogs, and I had a snake before, and like hamsters. Okay. <laughs> and so, would you ever like want to eat them, or did you ever have that desire? Uh, so like I had a pet snake, but I also have snake bags. <laughs> well, right, so you see so like, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, so have you ever once thought about from the position of the victim and what it would be like to be that animal and then have your life taken for someone else's taste pleasure or to be made into a designer bag? I know, that makes, it makes it sound really sad. <laughs> even, even my girlfriends though, like my girlfriends will be like, oh, like animals, blah, 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 they're so pure, like it's so sad. And I do think it's sad, but like, I don't know, I feel like Americans, and, or just people in general, it's kind of like a selfish way, but they're just so delicious. <laughs> right, I understand that. So do you, do you think then taste pleasure determines morality and what you should do to somebody else? Mm, mm, ooh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's so hard, because it's just like, at least like humans, like you can talk to them and stuff, like animals, like, you know, you don't have that like personal feeling with them. So then it's like, I feel like when you're born and raised that way, like you're used to eating them, that you don't even think about that kind of stuff, so. Right, definitely, I think that's a great point. We all are a product of our environment yeah. and our experiences up until this point in our lives. But in terms of that, hum like animals don't communicate like we do as humans, but they still have their own form feel, of communication yeah. between each other. Now, even humans though, we don't all communicate the same. We all yeah. speak different languages. How many languages do you speak? I only speak one. So you just speak English. Yeah. Okay, so I speak Spanish as well. So if I were to communicate with you in Spanish, which you wouldn't understand, yeah. and if I were to ask you, hey, can I take your life for taste pleasure? I wouldn't even know it you're saying yeah right so you wouldn't be able to properly respond so in that sense because you can't properly respond to me does that mean I can now take your life no yeah see it's so sad <laughs> right yeah also thinking of of Americans just because some people do things does that mean that you should also do them too even though you know deep down it's hypocritically and it goes against what you believe no, it's kind of like the jumping off the cliff expression. Like, if someone else jumps off the cliff, you shouldn't do it too. Like, but it, I don't know, it's so hard. Like, I feel like when you're like born in that environment and then you keep eating it your whole life, you know? Right. Like, it's kind of hard to stop because you're so used to it and you're thinking it's okay. So then I understand like everyone that wants to be vegan. Like, I'm just like, oh, I'm like, go you. Like, I'm not against it at all. And like, my best friends are vegan and I'm just like, go you. But it's just like, getting into that process again and like you know how like it's kind of like working out like you have to get into it to even start it and it's just like after you've had it for so long it's so hard to kind of like cut back from it got it I definitely understand that that way of thinking because I was once there myself honestly if you had asked me five years ago could I imagine being vegan you said no. I was very <laughs> yeah. adamant against it I said not a chance I was like what do vegans even eat lettuce I couldn't like where am I gonna get <laughs> my go protein <laughs> exactly I had no I had no idea at all but essentially I guess the next question would be what is stopping you from going vegan 
Uh, you almost kind of answered it, but... What? I don't know. I mean, like, nothing's, like, really stopping me, stopping me. I feel like it's, like, the selfishness of, like, the pleasure of the taste of it. Because um, even, like, my best friends that are vegan, like, they take me to vegan restaurants and, like, they have me, like, eat vegan food and stuff. And I'm like, it's good, but at the same time, I feel like since they've been vegan for years that they think it tastes as good as, like, the actual thing. And then I'm just like, oh, it's, like, not even close. But, like, some of it's really good, but, like, I don't know. It's just hard to, like, cut back. Like, you try your best to, like, cut back from things in general, like, no matter what the situation, even, like, vegan or, like, just general stuff in life. And, like, it's hard to cut back. But, like, I feel like after you, like, progress at least, like, it's not hard to at least if you really pursue it, then you can do it. But Right. I definitely understand that. When I first went vegetarian, I was, like, I just stopped eating meat. I was technically still pescatarian because I would eat fish. I feel like that's the easiest way to like start at least. Yep. Kind of easiest, yeah. yeah. Some people are able to just make that switch overnight and then others, they need some More time. time yeah. That's how it was for me. It took me a little bit of time and the last thing to go for me was uh, baked goods that had eggs and dairy in them. Oh there. yeah, I feel like eggs is the hardest because like it's the least subconscious like thought because it's not like an animal or you like it's an animal but it's like their eggs so you don't or even think of it or, like or oh, milk or cheese how they cut the chicken like milk cheese all the dairy stuff I feel like dairy would be the hardest for me like I've tried cutting out meats and like been pescatarian at least and like that was like pretty easy but I feel like when you take out like it's like all desserts and stuff like that it's so hard I'm a cheese fanatic I eat cheese every day so it's like that's like the hardest part of veganism that I feel like I don't know <laughs> like cheese I'm obsessed with so do you know though do you know what happens in the dairy industry like the process of how dairy and, and cheese dairy products like milk yeah. and cheese get to your plate I've seen I've seen some of the documentaries at least and like it makes me really sad like I, I honestly like I've cried watching the documentaries like it makes me really sad but I I don't know it's just so it's just so hard like when you're I just feel like when you're grown a certain way and like you've had that all your life you're just like you think it's okay you know what I mean but we've clearly established know, here and you know it's, you know it's not okay. I know. I know. It's just hard. Like, I mean, like 20 something years of life, you've been doing it forever. And then I feel like in general, like veganism and stuff, like, like, I don't know, it just became more of like a thing the past few years. So it's like 20 something years of my life. It's been okay. And then like the past few years of my life. How old are you? More. I'm 23. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm about to be 28. Yeah. So, but I'm, I feel like most, like more than probably like two thirds three thir fourths of my life like that's okay and then the past few years it's been like you know like more spoken about and stuff so it's kind of harder to Definitely. like go into that I understand like, that obviously like like I'm proud of people because like even my my girlfriends they've been eating meat forever for like 20 years and then they became vegetarian pescatarian then vegan so I'm like oh proud of you but then it's just like it's just it's a total process you know like it's not as easy as doing like general things in life like oh I'm gonna go work out after two weeks you're used to it like it's like more of a process because like your whole life you were so used to that and like society is like it's good it's good and then now it's like coming out more like no it's not okay so it's funny you said that you're 23 because I was 23 when I went vegetarian oh, really? and then I was 24 when I went fully vegan uh -huh. so their timelines are very yeah. similar <laughs> here so I guess in that sense asking you how do you feel about making that next step and in terms of the dairy industry you've already knows what happens if you were to put yourself in the position of that cow would you want that stuff happening to you no I wouldn't want that stuff happening to me that's what makes it so sad but it's just oh it's so hard I feel like just because like um, like how you said like you can't communicate with them and stuff so you don't even know how they're feeling but then it's like you differentiate like pets from like food that you eat and like they, at the, the same pets, time you shouldn't do that because like people have pigs as pets but they still eat pigs like exactly and, and then technically dogs can't communicate in yeah. our language how they're feeling but you can clearly see it yeah just like you can see the how a cow would and, feel yeah. if someone is abusing or torturing them or taking their life yeah. they clearly Even react in the documentaries they're like just hands in in the cow and you can hear them like you know and they're clearly fighting against them and then when they fight against them they're beaten yeah. so they stop fighting it's, it's sad so then we can establish a baseline of morality of what we would want done to us, that's how we should act towards other people, and what we wouldn't want done to us, that's also what we should not do to animal, not other yeah. people, but just other beings in general. We can establish that baseline of morality. Yeah. So essentially, do to that, others yeah. what you would want done to you. Would you say that is your level of morality? 
No, yeah, I understand that. Because I, like, I, per I personally, I, like, hate making other people feel bad. <laughs> and I hate, like, you know, like, make, like, seeing anybody sad or, like, anything sad. Even, like, my dog, I'm like, why are you sad? Like, you know? So, I mean, like, it makes sense. And even, like, my girlfriends, like, they try and, like, I'll, I'll like, try, you know, I'll go to, like, certain places or I'll eat it, like, here and then. But, like, I try to do, like, my part at least and, like, not eat meat for a couple days or, like, eat, like, so-and-so. But I feel like it's hard to, like, make the full commitment. But so, at least, like, you know, like, you're trying a little bit. I feel like in general, like, a society in general is, like, they're trying to do better with, like, I'm not going to eat meat every day of the week. Like, we're going to help a little bit. But, like, it's hard to make that full commitment still. I definitely understand that. So I guess, tell me if I'm wrong here, but after having this great conversation with you and everything that you've said to me, what I'm seeing here is that, like I said, your level of morality is do to others what you'd want done to you. So that's, we can establish that. If you wouldn't want something done to you, don't do it to another. And then also in terms of making that switch, what holds you back is just because of your experiences up until this point, it makes it hard for you to change. Yeah, I feel like it's like a, a whole process, like it's a longer process than you would want it to be. Got it. So I connect with you on that because my experiences when I was making the transition, as I mentioned about the baked goods with dairy and eggs, I didn't fully connect yet with the animals. I was still living from my own perspective of the taste pleasure that I was receiving from these baked goods mm -hmm. without realizing that the dairy and egg industries are actually more evil than the meat industry because like they're taking their babies. Right, they take their babies and then they subject them to a life of exploitation, of genital exploitation, sexual exploitation, to take their byproducts and then when they can no longer produce those byproducts, they're ultimately killed for meat. So they live a life long, much longer than the animals raised solely for meat, exploited their whole life and then killed. I didn't fully connect with that and so that's why I'm like really connecting with you here yeah. in terms of life experience and even just kind of like timeline age wise. Like it is harder to like think of it that way because I feel like people are like oh the animals are getting hurt blah 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 so like you think of cutting out meats first before like eggs and dairy because you're not thinking about that because you're like oh it's not a physical animal yet it's not born yet so like you don't have that connection to it but then it's still like oh it's their child they're still getting violated you know exactly so, like it's harder to make that connection because when you think about meat you're like oh they're getting butchered they're getting killed blah blah, blah. so like most people start out with the meat at least and then like the dairy part is like so much harder because you don't make that full connection yet right exactly and I'm so much with you on that because that's where my mindset was at and I guess to offer you my perspective and what ultimately did it for me is when I saw what happens to baby chicks born into the egg industry have you ever seen that uh, I've seen like some stuff but not like but I know they like take the eggs right away and stuff and they like you know like feed them like over like overdose feed them basically just so they can produce more and more and more for their So profit. that's for the egg laying hens but for the baby male chicks born into the egg industry they're deemed useless because they can't produce eggs. So what happens is they're separated from the female chicks and they're dropped either in a garbage can in a garbage bag just all hundreds on top of each other that bag's tied up and they're suffocated to death or they're put on a conveyor belt and they are dropped alive into a macerator which is a large industrial sized garbage disposal and they're ground up alive and then that meat is turned into pet food or McDonald's chicken nuggets etc so that's ultimately when I saw that and I was like wow I just personally cannot morally say that I actually love animals and would never willingly do this to an animal and I especially wouldn't willingly trade places with that animal and yeah. give up my life that's when I was like I can't just not only eat meat I need to make that next step and go fully vegan because I don't want to live hypocritically that was my personal experience and it just like I'm really resonating yeah. I'm really <laughs> resonating with yours because at first I personally used to think when people would bring this to my attention my brother especially he brought this to my attention it would make me kind of be like ah oh, whatever bro I don't want to hear it I know, Why are you makes making you sad? Right, because I'm like, oh, you're making me feel. But I, he wasn't making me feel guilty because he was just communicating the how objective. He felt. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, not even how he felt. He was just communicating the objective fact of what happens in the industry. What was making me feel guilty was my inner conscience. Yeah. And then I had to look myself in the mirror and say, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live hypocritically. And I really resonate with your experience because I feel like it's very much similar up until this point where you're thinking as 
is where mine was. Yeah. Aww. So <laughs> the, the last question that I have for you then is, if you had to live a life where you could abuse animals, <laughs> abuse humans, or neither, which would you choose? I mean, neither, obviously. <laughs> Like, that's, like, the moral aspect of things. Like, you don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> now, one more question. Would you want to continue living your life knowing all of the information that you know and living hypocritically, going against your morals and continuously paying for the mass suffering and death of billions of creatures, including your favorite, cows? Would you be okay with living your life like that and really suppressing that guilt and knowing I'm living hypocritically or do you think it would be better to make a change and say hey maybe these things don't taste the greatest now but my palate can change over time and I'm doing this because it's so much bigger than me and my taste buds because you don't have to value animals the same as humans you just have to value their life and their entire existence over your taste pleasure which only lasts 10 to 15 minutes anyway yeah I mean I feel like in general like like it's like progress if you do go through that kind of thing so it's like oh like if I ever did like it's gonna take it's definitely gonna take some time in general because I'm like a super cheese fanatic like beef if I had killed every animal and I kept one it would be beef like so that's like a hard thing for me but I mean like obviously like over time you can over accomplish anything like if you want to really do it you can and then I feel like in general because even my girlfriends like it took them a while you know and like it was like pescatarian for a while and then after a while they're like hey we can take out fish too because like you have those simple pleasures in life and like you want to have them because you're like good but as you said like 10 15 minutes like you eat it and then you're like done is it really worth yeah entire existence? so like it's like i don't know i feel like it's like a progress like it, it could happen but then at the same time like it would it definitely takes some time for me but like um, even my girlfriends, like sometimes they'll be like, oh, let's go to this. Like I go to vegan restaurants with them. And they're like, let's go here, let's go here. It tastes just like blah, blah, blah. But they've been vegan for like a couple years and I try it, I'm like, it does not taste like this, <laughs> you know? But then like, I'm like, okay, well you haven't had it for a while. So like to you, it tastes like that. So honestly, if you were vegan for a while, you wouldn't even know the difference because once you start eating vegan food and you're like trying vegan food that tastes like this, this and this, you're like, oh, it does taste like that. Cause you don't even remember. And it's like, unless you eat it again, you're not even gonna remember that. And even like my sister, she was vegetarian for a while she had meat after a while and she was like this is disgusting so like after you don't have something for so long it's not even good anymore so like obviously with like progress and you know like you can get there there you go you're on your way I yeah. love to hear that so I guess just to answer that question would you rather live aligned with your morals and be on a side of history that stands up for the voiceless or would you rather live hypocritically, which is something you said you don't like doing? I know. You know what? You know what? For, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start trying to eat less meat <laughs> next so, week. I'm so, gonna, I love like, that. Today, I is love that. today is Sunday. I'm going to start instead of Sunday through Saturday. I'm going to start Monday through Saturday. I love that. <laughs> and I'm going to try to eat less meat in the, in the week. I love to hear that. I'll try to do like at least one or two meatless days. <laughs> I love to hear that. No, that's phenomenal. Progress, I really love to progress. hear that. Like you gotta, you gotta do step by step. No, no, totally. <laughs> but I, I do, I do have to. I want to hear your, I want to hear your answer. I love hearing all of what you're saying. But this is what I had to ask myself. If you're not ready to answer this, I understand. But would you rather live aligned with your morals or misaligned with your morals? I mean, I, I, obviously, I feel like everyone would want to align with their morals. Okay, I it love just that. it just progress. <laughs> like you of have, course. You have to of course, <laughs> and I love to see all the progress that you made just in this conversation right here. I think you're really doing a great job. I know, it makes me sad, like hearing about it, like, like you see it and then you're like, ah, like you kind of brush it off. But then when you actually talk about it, it makes you sadder. <laughs> no, but you're, you're on your way. I love to hear that. So it was a pleasure, Remy. Thank it you so much. It was a pleasure much. talking to you too. Yeah. I'm glad you guys moved here. This is cool. Like I, I love this whole thing. Like it's really great. <laughs> I think we have, I think we have a new vegan on our way here. Just give it like a few months, maybe by the end of 2022, we'll see. That's why I said, that's why I said Monday through Saturday. Well, it was great to meet you, Remy. Thank you, you so too. much. Thank of course. You.